Hi everyone, it's Shelby. Welcome back to this week's meal plan. Saturday, we are making chicken fried steak. Haven't made it in a while. With just some country gravy, mashed potatoes uh, that came out of our garden. Of course, we're gonna have some of that wonderful corn on the cob that our neighbor brought us. It's just peak of the season. And I'm gonna make some Davy Crockett bars. I'll put a link for the Davy Crockett bars in the description box. We are making some chicken fried steak tonight. I have two cups of flour, two teaspoons of salt, a teaspoon of black pepper, a teaspoon of paprika, a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. We are just gonna get this all mixed together. Three eggs, one and a fourth cup of milk. Let me beat these eggs up. This is gonna be our breading station. We're gonna go in with the flour, egg wash, back in the flour, and then to a hot iron skillet that has a little bit of oil heating up. This is some round steak that has been tenderized. Uh, you could use cube steak, same thing really. Into the flour, into the egg wash, back into the flour, and then into the frying pan. Repeat. I'm going to cook the chicken fried steak in batches. I'll turn it a couple of times. I wanna get a nice golden brown color on all of the pieces. I don't wanna crowd the pan. One tip is the food will tell you when it wants to get turned. When it's loose like that, see how that just moves really easily? It's time to turn it. Um, It'll just tell you. That one's a little sticking, so just leave it and uh, cook it a little longer. And when it moves freely, it'll be time to turn. Just a little tip. To make the gravy, I have four tablespoons of the oil and a fourth a cup of flour. I'm gonna season with salt and pepper. Make a little roux. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just gonna cook this for a minute or so. We're just gonna add two cups of milk and bring this up to temperature. It'll take just a couple of minutes. I'm gonna stir constantly. Here's what our plate looks like. We have the chicken fried steak, mashed potatoes, corn on the cob, and some milk gravy. Sunday, we're gonna make mac and cheese. And this particular recipe was one that Ken's mom used to make for our boys when they were little. And it's just kind of nostalgic for them. And occasionally I'll make it. And it was a big hit. <laughs> Needless to say, took them right back to childhood. Just serving it with some garlic bread and a very simple salad. In my big pot, I have a half a cup of butter. I'm adding a half a cup of flour. Gonna make a little roux. Want to cook it for a minute or so. Be right back. Adding a little salt, a little pepper. I like to add a little pinch of garlic and a pinch of mustard. Just a pinch of mustard, dry mustard. All right. We're gonna add four cups of milk. Mm -hmm. 
going to take about 10 minutes to bring this up to temperature. I'm going to stir constantly until it thickens and comes to temperature. We're going to add one pound of Velveeta cheese. You can just cut it into cubes. We want this to start melting. I'm going to add about three-fourths of a pound of cheddar and I'm going to reserve some about a fourth a pound of it uh, for the top. I'm just going to stir this constantly until the cheese melts. Meanwhile, I'm going to cook a pound of medium shells and then get them drained into a 13 by 9 inch pan. I went ahead and I mix the cheese sauce in with the pound of cooked medium shells. I like using the shells because they really hold on to the sauce. Now take that reserved fourth a pound of cheese. I like to sprinkle it on top. Then I'm just going to get this into a preheated 350 oven and I'm just going to have it in there for maybe five, ten minutes, just long enough to melt the cheese. We made some garlic bread using our compound garlic butter. We went ahead and we just melted the cheese on top of the macaroni and cheese and we're serving it with the garlic bread and a very simple salad with Italian dressing. That's what we're having for dinner. Monday, I had made some chicken uh, salad sandwiches. I had bought some chicken breasts. They were 99 cents a pound. I just baked them off in the oven, threw together uh, chicken salad and uh, we had it with some of that good corn again. <laughs> and then I served, uh, served it with either grapes or with uh, grape salad. And I can also link that uh, grape salad recipe for you if you guys want a little bit more details on how to make it delicious. These are those chicken breasts I got for 99 cents a pound. I've just drizzled some olive oil on top of them, salt and pepper. They're going into a 400 degree oven and we're just gonna cook them uh, till they're cooked all the way through. I just took the chicken out. I'm gonna let it cool before I cut it up into some chunks. All right, I went ahead and I let the chicken cool and I uh, cut it into chunks. I seasoned with salt and pepper, a little bit of dried tarragon. I have some chopped celery and some chopped pecans. And I had a little bit of parsley in the uh, garden. I went ahead and I chopped up a couple tablespoons of that. Now I'm just going to moisten uh, the chicken salad with enough mayonnaise uh, for it to come together. I got the salad all mixed together and I'm just gonna put some on this croissant. I have some lettuce. It's amazing how much just three chicken breasts makes. The boys will have chicken uh, salad uh, sandwiches, you know, maybe one more time for lunch this week or something. All right. Perfect. For dinner, we're having the chicken salad on a croissant with some lettuce we're having corn again. My neighbor brought us fresh corn that he picked right out of the field. It is so phenomenal. I'm serving it probably with everything this week. <laughs> and then we have some grapes. And I made an extra plate. I'm gonna take it over to my neighbor. We're gonna have uh, supper with her. She's just gotten out of the hospital and I thought she could use some company. So Kim and I are gonna go have our dinner with her. All right, that's what we got going on tonight. Tuesday, we had cheese enchiladas, Mexican rice, and refried beans. And I did a, re a recent video cook with me tutorial on this whole dinner. So I'll put that in the description box. So if you guys want to see how to make it, um, homemade enchilada sauce, you know, the whole uh, uh, menu, um, I'll link that for you guys. So you can go watch that video. I made some cheese enchiladas with some homemade enchilada sauce, some refried beans, and uh, Mexican rice here. 
I've made this on my channel before, so I'll put the link in the description box. Here's our plates, cheese enchiladas, Mexican rice, refried beans. We have sour cream and avocado. Ken and I are gonna go see our neighbor. Uh, she just got out of the hospital and uh, we wanna have dinner with her. So we're gonna take these to go. Wednesday, I made some Mongolian beef. I haven't made that in a, a good while. I forgot how good it is. <laughs> Just served it with some steamed jasmine rice. Um, it's kind of an ugly duckling, you know, it's all brown. It's not very exciting to look at, but it tastes really good. Tonight I'm making some Mongolian beef stir fry for dinner. I have three pounds of skirt steak that I sliced against the grain into thin slices. And I'm just gonna add a couple of tablespoons of cornstarch. and two tablespoons of soy sauce. I wanna get this marinade going early in the day. And then two tablespoons of Shaoshan wine. If you don't have Shaoshan wine, sherry is a really good substitute. That's the marinade. I want to get this mixed together. I'll put saran wrap on this and get this in the refrigerator and just let it sit until I'm ready to cook dinner tonight. I think I'm gonna go in with my hands. I have clean hands. It's probably gonna be easier. Just wanna get all the meat coated. I think that looks pretty great. Let me wash my hands. The meat has been marinating all day and it smells wonderful. Now I have everything ready here. I have a four tablespoons of oil, two large onions sliced, four cloves of garlic. I used the microplane and grated it. A tablespoon of grated fresh ginger, two teaspoons of red pepper flakes, uh, eight green onions. I put the white parts in one container and I'm gonna garnish with the green tops. A handful of cilantro chopped and then this is gonna be our sauce, a half a cup of soy sauce, a half a cup of chicken stock, six tablespoons of brown sugar, and four tablespoons of a Shaoshan wine, or you could use a sherry. We're gonna get the wok heated up. I have some steamed rice cooking as well. We're gonna put the oil in the wok. I'm gonna do half the meat, kind of, uh, saute it in sections. going to add the rest of the oil. We'll start with our onions. The onions are starting to get cooked down quite a bit. 
I'm going to add the whites of the green onions. The red pepper flakes. Garlic. Ginger. Cook this for about a minute. Oh, it's so fragrant. the meat back to the pan. I'm going to add the sauce. To plate it up, I just added some steamed rice to the bowl and then topped it with the Mongolian beef and just put some cilantro as a garnish. This is an excellent recipe and makes about six generous servings. Thursday, we just had breakfast for dinner. Ken fried up some bacon, eggs. We had uh, English muffins, orange juice, coffee tea, that kind of thing. And it's just a, a wonderful way to use up some of the eggs. We have chickens in our Chickens are really laying real heavily right now. So having breakfast for dinner is not only a way to use up the eggs, but it's very inexpensive meal to have thrown in your um, menu plan. You know, you could do it once a week. You could do pancakes, you know, whatever. I like to do that sometimes, just throw in a breakfast for dinner kind of thing. It's always uh, makes your budget stretch a little further. And then um, Friday, we made some cheeseburgers, and uh, I picked out the best, biggest potatoes that we got from our potato harvest this year and made some baked Parmesan potato wedges. Those are always good. We're going to make some baked Parmesan uh, potato wedges. I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil probably a couple tablespoons full onto the potato wedges. We're gonna salt and pepper. I'm gonna go a little light on the salt because I'm gonna add some Parmesan cheese and I don't want it to be too salty because Parmesan's a little salty. Probably about a half a cup, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use that whole little bit of Parmesan that I have left. And just give this a big stir, get it all coated. And then we're gonna turn this out onto a baking sheet. I have the oven preheated at 425. We're gonna place the sheet tray in there and these are just gonna bake off in the oven. I have a tablespoon of olive oil and one onion diced cooking in my iron skillet. I have it on low. I just added a couple cloves of minced garlic. We'll cook this down. I have it on low. I'm just gonna make a really quick sauce to put on the burgers. I usually take equal parts of mayo and ketchup. So for every tablespoon of ketchup, I use a tablespoon of mayonnaise. And likewise, I use a teaspoon of mustard. I'm just gonna add a little bit of relish as well and give this a big stir. Super simple. Here we go. The onions are all caramelized. They look great. I'm gonna turn the heat off. We're gonna get these burgers plated up. I went ahead and toasted the buns. We're gonna put some of that hamburger sauce on the bottom bun. And then take our hamburger 
place it right there. Top it with some of those grilled onions. I love grilled onions. How simple is this dinner? Just a smidge of sauce on the top bun. There's our hamburger. Now let me show you these Parmesan uh, potato wedges. Oh my goodness, they smell so good. Let's look at these potato wedges. Oh look, they got some nice color. They smell amazing. Here is our real simple grilled cheese burger with the caramelized onions and those wonderful Parmesan potato wedges. That's what we're having for dinner. Well, that was our menu plan for this week. I hope you guys have a great week and happy meal planning. See you in the next video.